Aloha! <laughs> Friends and family, how are you wonderful beautiful people doing today? You guys good with that? Is that strange? Is it, is it too weird? Can you get used to that? Because that, that's what I'm going to do from now on, I think. I've been topping the morning for quite some time now. There's several times people have been down in the comments like, Jacksepticeye does that, and I was like, who's Jacksepticeye? And he's like this huge YouTuber. He's Irish. I think there's a lot of people that are watching that don't realize that top of the morning is like kind of a semi-traditional semi Irish greeting, not just something that Jacksepticeye invented. However, however, and I, I was going to just keep using it anyway, as I have been. Somebody was like, Aloha might work better for you since like, you know, I, I am... 11% Polynesian and only 2% Irish. I was really working that 2% Irish really, really hard. I, I like Irish people and I, I'm proud to be a uh, 2%. But Aloha, I, you know, I lived in Hawaii for a long time and Aloha is a strong word. It means a lot, you know, a lot, maybe people are very familiar with the fact that Aloha can be used as a greeting or, or a farewell, but it also means caring, love, Kindness. People in Hawaii have a phrase, you know, live aloha, just basically means to, to live that way, to be, be a, a kind person and, and uh, kind of like the golden rule, treat people as you want to be treated. All that stuff fits into the word aloha. So I think I'm going to start using it as my morning greeting instead. You guys good with that? I like it. Strapping your seatbelts, strapping your face belts, because face belts? Because you're going to learn a lot today, potentially. We got a clutch to show you, but before I show you that, before I teach you all about the Coral Glow sex linked thing which I'm going to do. It's been done before but uh, I'm gonna do it too and kind of visualize it for you and hopefully make it very easy to understand for those of you that are still trying to figure it out. Also, okay so this morning I got up and instead of driving to the store I walked to the store which I've never done. I mean I walk, I run all over this town but I've never just walked to the store with a backpack to get my groceries. I always drive. So I figured I wanted to change it up a little bit, change my perspective a little bit, and just walk. And you see different things. You know, you get to see people stumbling out of the creek, uh, <laughs> which I, I'm not judging. I, I've stumbled out of the creek in the morning too. Take a little slower piece, you get to see the different buildings, pay a little more attention to things you don't get to see when you're driving by in a car. And plus my back, I think, was getting a little sore in the lower area from all the driving and all the sitting in the desk. So I was like, I need to, I need to walk. And, and while I was walking, it reminded me of this cartoon that I've seen before. It's like a comic strip style cartoon about perspective. And in this cartoon, there's, you got a guy in this like super fancy sports car. A guy pulls up next to him in, in like a regular car and he's kind of looking over like, that must be nice. Next to that guy, you got a guy that pulls up on a bike. He's like, oh man, that looks, that must be nice. And then you got the guy walking down the sidewalk, looking at the guy on the bike, like, oh man, that must be nice. And then up in this apartment, you got a guy looking down in a, from a wheelchair, like, oh man, that must be nice, looking at the guy walking down the street. It just made me think about that whole thing of perspective and, and how it affects your reality, because your reality basically is your perspective. And you've got the power to change it however you want. Speaking of perspectives, other people's perspectives, maybe something you can't really change and maybe not worry about. It doesn't matter how, how good you are, how, how, how much you are true to yourself and your soul and you try to treat people well and, and do good, there's always gonna be somebody out there that sees you and has a perspective of, I don't like that guy. I don't like that person. That, that, I don't like the way they talk. There's something, they just don't like you. And there's nothing you can do to change that. So you don't wanna waste your time trying to, in my opinion because it, it could just be a waste of time. You just do you, live your own truth, regardless of what somebody else might think about you. That's, that's the best you can do. Anyway, morning thoughts with Brian. Let's uh, check out this clutch. All right, so we'll show off the parents just like we did in yesterday's video. If you missed yesterday's video, maybe go back and watch it. We had another clutch yesterday, also banana. Got my mind on banana. That's why we're doing banana stuff today. Well, they're, they're coral glows, banana. It's pretty widely accepted at this point that coral glow and banana are just two different lines of the same trait, so we're just gonna go with that. I'm gonna say banana a lot today because it's more fun to say than coral glow. Even though these are coral glows, okay? Let's, let's, just, let's just do that. Can we do that? Please, thank you. Coral glow pied. Ha ha, said coral glow. Coral glow pied. Banana pied. Coral glow pied. He's a coral glow. Damn it, I'm just gonna say banana, okay? When I, when, I, when I sell these guys and everything, I'll sell them as Coral Glow because that's the line they came from. But I'm just gonna say banana just for today's video. And here's mom, also Coral Glow line, but uh, her name is Maya, which is actually Hawaiian for banana. <laughs> yep, she's beauty too. Aren't you, Maya? You're so pretty. You're so pretty, mommy. This is what happens when you have a daughter. You start, you start talking like that, I promise. These guys are ball pythoning it, except for this guy. The rest of them are, are doing the ball python, and he's like 
What, what kind of python are you anyway? Are you sure you're a ball python? Because these guys got it down. You're kind of all over the place, Holmes. Four baby snakes mama gave us. Uh, we got two normal het pied, and which I'm willing to bet are female. And then we've got a regular coral glow banana and a super coral glow banana. Gosh, I'm just driving myself crazy saying coral glow banana. I'm 99% sure that's a, that's a super coral glow right there. Um, I'll wait for them to have some more sheds and eventually he should not develop spots. And uh, we'll talk about why these are female and why these are male in the video and I'll show you exactly. I'm gonna visualize it for you really well so make sure you stick around so you can see this because I think it, if you hadn't figured it out already or even if you do know it kinda, this is gonna like really solidify in your mind. It's getting loud up there. I, ha I hadn't sexed these yet, I just assumed that the normals are gonna be female and the males are gonna be uh, coral glow banana and sure enough normals are female and the the coral glows are male So look at that head stamp on this first normal here. That's really cool So it almost kind of looks like a yellow belly head stamp and that male The king the father he was a pos yellow belly, but it, it never really proved out um, I'm not saying it's proven out here definitely not saying that but very cool looking the the pied influence is making this snake very beautiful look at the orange kind of coming up into the alien heads the orange and the uh the orange flecking kind of like reminiscent of, of enchi orange flecking coming up there. Very nice. The blacks are nice. Get that little bit of uh, tracking that people talk about on the belly with, with het pieds. Very nice. And here is the second het pied female. Again with that little head stamp kind of looking like, like Mickey Mouse. Very cool. Again with the, the orange flecking coming up the sides. Also very cool. That, that, that gravelly kind of orange and white popping up in the alien heads really cool looking normal that's for sure and and again that that tracking that pied tracking on the belly down towards the tail very cool beautiful head on the first coral glow male this is just the single gene coral glow of course het pied broken record broken record with that het pied talk beautiful alien heads really nice with that look at that that light color coming up in the alien heads very very nice and you really can't see the het pied tracking on the coral glows at least not in this light probably it's like something very subtle that's not easy to see but one thing's for certain that is that is a gorgeous snake right there definitely a gorgeous snake here is the super coral glow i'm gonna try and hold them side by side with the regular coral glow so you got the super here and the regular here, you can kind of see it's much lighter, kind of like almost pastel-y kind of looking thing. And that's that's how you can tell the super from the the non-super. Again, much much lighter and more pastel-y than the than the regular coral glow, which is right here beneath him. You can kind of you can you can definitely see in this lighting the the difference between the two. I think so. Pretty cool. I'm excited to tell you guys about the uh, the sex link thing and show you the visuals because uh, okay so. We're gonna move on. Look at how much tinier I got. That's, I'm small now. I'm a tiny guy. I'm little. I got my XX and my XY on the table. We'll do a brief rundown of biology for those of you that are, are not quite up to par on that. I've also got my bananas. These are my little bananas. That's why I was so obsessed with calling the coral glow banana. Cause like, how do you figure out a little place marker for coral glow? No, it doesn't work. If you need a banana. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how it works. I'll try not to get too scientific with some of the words, but maybe a little bit, just a little bit, but I'll try to keep it as layman terms as possible, make it as simple to understand as possible with, with the lingo too. We're all diploid species, all the species that have two chromosomes are diploid, I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. Females have two X chromosomes. Males have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. If you're a female, you pass on one of your chromosomes to your offspring. So females pass on an X every time. Males pass on either an X or a Y. So the male determines the sex of the babies. Because if mom passes off her ex and dad passes off his ex, the baby becomes a female. Mom passes off one of her exes, dad passes off his Y, baby's a male. Now here's how this works with coral glow. Let's take for instance the pairing I did in the last video. It was a male coral glow to a female that was not coral glow. So my, my coral glow is a male maker and that's because his banana gene resides on the Y chromosome, in his case. When those two snakes bred, mom passed on her ex, and he passed on his ex, all the females were not banana. That's how they all, they all came out. Any ones that were female were not banana for that reason. Now, any of the ones that got passed on this way, 
where A, banana, because banana is a dominant trait, it only needs to be on one chromosome to show through in the phenotype or visually, and they're male, XY. So this offspring is also now a male maker banana because in the future, anything that he breeds to, and he passes on his banana trait, it's gonna be on that Y chromosome again and all the males are gonna be coral glow. So let's take a look at the pairing that we did for the clutch today and not yesterday. Now here's the difference with this pairing. Mom is also coral glow. So she's got a coral glow all sitting on one of her X chromosomes, which actually means that in that pairing that I did, we could have gotten a female banana because it would have been like that. We didn't happen to hit any of those. What did happen to create this normal, dad passed on his X chromosome, mom passed off her X chromosome without the, without the banana on it. And you got a normal, het pied female. Now in the case of the normal coral glow, not the super, but the regular coral glow male, this is exactly what happened. Mom passed on her X chromosome without the banana, and dad passed on his Y chromosome. And you've got a normal banana male, which is what that is. You guys with me so far? Can you see my bananas on there? I hope so. Now with the super banana, this is what happened. Dad passed on his Y chromosome with the banana and mom passed on her X chromosome with the banana. And so you got a super, you got banana on both. So this boy, when he breeds to a female down the road, say he breeds to a normal female, all of the babies are gonna be banana because even if he passes on his X chromosome, it's still gonna have banana and that'll be female. Even if he passes on his Y chromosome, the baby's gonna be banana. So all babies from a super are gonna be banana for that reason. Let's say you had a super banana female that you bred to a non-banana male. You're still gonna make all bananas because as long as one of the chromosomes has banana, then it's gonna be a visual banana. Even if this happens, it doesn't matter. You're always gonna have banana because mom is gonna pass on one of her chromosomes and each one has banana. In this case, you get a male banana and that male is gonna be a female maker. When he's paired to a normal, this male, this new male with the banana on the X chromosome instead of the Y chromosome is gonna make a female banana. Whereas if he passes on his Y chromosome, it's gonna be non-banana. So you guys kinda see how that works now? Is it making sense? I'm hope it's, I hope it's making sense. I'm trying my best to really make sense and make it easy to understand for you guys visually. I really hope it is. If it has made sense for you, here's where it can get confusing. Sometimes, sometimes in the process, you can have a female maker banana male and somehow in the process, that banana will cross over to the Y and you'll still get males. And then that male will become a male maker banana. Is that confusing? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> all right, all right, my, my brain, it's a lot easier to think of in my head. I really hope I did a good job visualizing it for you guys. I'm done here. Let's go up and see the family. Oh, is she getting her other canine? Tushy, you getting more teeth? that one, see? You getting more teeth, teeth? Yeah. Oh my gosh, T. Oh, More T. Say, ready? Can you do that thing? Ready? Say, go. Uh, uh. <laughs> ready? Say, uh. 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 <laughs> oh, poor oh. T. Teething babies, teething babies. Hey, mommies. Yes. I'm, I'm starting to say. Aloha, friends and family in the morning instead of top of the morning. Ooh. <laughs> what do you think Ooh, about that? I like it. You like it? Yeah. All right. All right. Sold. What's that? So that means we have to go to Hawaii this year. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are you boys up to over here? Making Play-Doh. Making Play-Doh? Yeah. Ooh. With food coloring. With food coloring? <laughs> mm -hmm. Very nice, my guys. Very nice indeed. Wow, that's what food coloring. What do you know? I know. Well, really? What about Play Doh? That, that when you first make it, it can be out hot. <laughs> What's it made out of? Um, I forgot. And that's all I know. Mm. All right, short and sweet. Hey, Eli. What? What do you oh, know? I know. Clay? Yeah. What about clay? And it's the C2 and Jake Play-Doh. That's all I know. 
these guys are way too busy to elaborate for you guys today, so I mean, they're just they're they're hard at work. I'm gonna let them continue on. I think I've already pushed your brain hard enough for the day. I definitely pushed my brain hard enough today. I hope you guys have a great day. See you tomorrow.